Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video on my motorhome purchase. As you remember from the last few videos, we really did crack on inside and get a lot of it done. We got really a lot done and there was a lot of work to do. Um, first couple of bits I want to pick up on. One of you subscribers reached out to me and said that he had a heating system for it and also the fridge that was missing. So I've just been down to Cornwall for a week. I planned on stopping at Devon on the way home and grabbing those. And he's emailed me saying that the fire wouldn't pass a gas check and the fridge wouldn't work on 240. So he's not happy for me to have them. So that's one little downside. The second downside, I got home. I didn't realize I'd purchased it on my girlfriend's eBay, not mine. And she'd received a refund for this window that we purchased from the guy. So I have no idea what happened there because he didn't even reach out to me or contact me. So we've now got to find one of those windows. But the most important thing is it is actually sat here and I can't really move it. We can move it a little bit, but I don't want to go too mad in it. And the reason for that is the cam belt. Now, a couple of you did pick up on this in the last video, but I'm getting as close as I can. Guys, look how bad that cam belt is. That's probably the worst looking cam belt I've ever seen on a vehicle. That is due to snap at any point. So I don't actually want to run this engine anymore. We're going to whip round to the local motor factors. I've just called four different motor factors. I always do it. I ring around and get the best price I can. Let's head round there now and pick up these parts. So I've just arrived guys and the garage of the choice today is GSF car parts. Obviously, I did have a ring around, and they was the cheapest out there for the bits. They also, you probably already know this, they do do free local delivery, all these motor factors. But to be honest, I know everyone in the motor factors, and I come around, and it's a bit more of a personal touch. You pay for your stuff. And I've, I've rung ahead, I told them I was coming, and there it is already there. Got my trade discount on there. All the time, Rob, you know that. Right, lovely. So that was £149.38. And that was oil, oil filter, diesel filter, air filter, cam belt kit, and the oil, and the auxiliary belt we haven't got in, but that's coming in late this afternoon for me. And they'll probably come and just drop that through the gate. I'll pay for it now. So, guys, quite a lot of you, I know that you're not really car people, and a lot of people only use one particular company because they don't know about little companies like this. This one in particular is GSF. There is many other motor factors out there, but they do deliver locally to trade, but they, you know, normal customers are welcome, the general public to walk in. Like the other place that I won't say their name, but a set of wiper blades is about 25 pounds. You come into a motor factors like this, you get the same thing and they're probably five pounds each. I mean, don't quote me on that, but everything is a lot cheaper. Like a light bulb here will be five pound at the other place. It'll be 20 pounds. So. Just bear it in mind, your local motor factors are everywhere. And all you gotta do is just Google GSF and it will come up with the nearest one to you. Let's head back to the yard and get this lot Before fitted. Before we get cracking with this guys, there is quite a few little bits and bobs that we gotta do, like remove the wheel, remove the plastic shield inside there, remove some of these brackets and bits and pieces out the way under the bonnet. So we are gonna actually get straight on and get all of that done. We wanna try and clear everything out the way so that basically we can get right in there and show you exactly what it is that we're doing. floor and I've obviously I've got tools in my hand so 
there's not a great deal I can show, but as you can see here, this is a spring-loaded tensioner. I've taken the nut and the washer out of this idler here. And if you look, when you push that back, it takes the tension out of the belt. And if you look on the back of that spring-loaded tensioner, we can just get a little pair of pointed nose mole grips on the back of that, hold it out of the way, put the new idlers on, uh, tensioners, put the uh, new cam belt on, and then literally release those mole grips, and that will put the right amount of tension back in the belt, and then we can do the nuts up, and that was pretty much it, but it was very, very easy and straightforward to do. As you can see, this little hole at the bottom here, that does line up exactly in line with, you see the engine's at a bit of an angle. It doesn't want a good clean up here, but it's actually dead center of this plate. And because there's a bit of surface rust on there, you're not gonna see, but you can actually feel a little raised part on there. What that does tally up with, the diesel pump itself, we put a pin in there, and right at the top, there's actually two timing marks, and it, I think we got it on the back timing mark, Chris, did we, or was it the front one? No, it's, I'll uh, come up there and show it, actually. Thanks, mate. Cheers for that. Chris saving the day there, bringing me out a bottle of water. But as you can see, you've got quite a large one there, and you've got a little one there. And the little one lines up with that little piece there in the cast. See that there lines up perfect. So as soon as we line those up, I was able to get a pin. Yeah, you, you probably can see it actually. If I point, if I point down there, you can probably see that drill bit poking out, and that's locked out the timing on the pump. But as you can see, these uh, these idlers, they're not very good as well. They're really, really worn. So this was clearly sat for many, many years. But yeah, we'll pull that tensioner across, put some uh, pointed nose mole grips on the back of it get that belt off, swap it out, and then release, get the tension back in it, and obviously all the new idlers on it. I've just had a look, and they are, there's two there, and they are slightly different sizes, so we're doing one at a time, and you can't go wrong, and we've got the new belt there as well, so that'll be the hard part of it done, I should think, which would be nice. Let's crack on, carry on, get that done. the old belt off there guys and I've got Chris to put it side by side with a new one and I mean Chris how long was that gonna last Not long, was it? a little bit of pressure on that that yeah, would have gone wouldn't it? Bad, it very bad so we're now gonna get those idlers on and then get that new belt fitted so there you go guys nice new cam belt and as you can see down there nice new idler nice and clean nice new bearing in there really really gonna last a good few years now and we got that peace of mind that we can start it up rev it up and we ain't gonna have no dramas the <clears throat> excuse me i've got the rocker box uh, sorry the rocker box plastic cover in the back of the van and that actually acts as part of a cover for the top of this cam so i do need to put all that back on but i'm gonna do that probably tomorrow and give this all a good wash anyway i've got the top half of the cam belt cover here and as you can see, it's got like a bit of a slot at the top. And you do see the cam belt sticking out of that. That's where I noticed it. And that other cover just basically sits on the top. And that bottom section there actually slots into this one here. As you can see, it's like two halves. So I'm going to crack on and get all that done. I need to whip this uh, large nut back out and stick the bottom pulley back on. And also the new auxiliary belt did just arrive i've got the old one here on the floor but i did just get chris to compare them and unfortunately this is slightly too large so i shall take that home it is 
like I say, it is getting quite late now. I should take that home and pick up the correct one for it in the morning and get all that side of it done. Also, we've got oil to do, diesel filter, air filter, fuel filter. So we've got plenty to be getting on with. But I'm quite happy with how that cam belt come out because all together with me and Chris, that was probably just over an hour's work and very very simple to do when we first looked in there we haven't done one of these before chris said oh that does look quite tight and it did look tight but it's been very straightforward and we haven't come across any problems which is always an absolute plus so there you go guys fired right up first flick of the key very very good nice strong engine that and now we've got that peace of mind that the cam belt is done i'll put that black cover on chris run down one of these threads for me because it was a bit worn out and we got the cover on there with two new nice nice nuts on there holding it on i am just letting it get right up to temperature now before i drain the oil down it is always best when servicing a vehicle let the engine oil get as hot as you can and then once you drain it out it becomes a lot thinner and you get the more of it out so to speak so we've got a new air filter here that's got to go in it as well we've got the new diesel filter there that's going to be going in we'll probably take it outside in the yard to do the diesel filter um, we've also got the oil filter there and the oil and although i don't plan on spilling one drop the diesel filter is right down the back there as you can see so we'll be putting trays underneath it and i'll probably put the black lay down mat underneath it as well but we're going to do it outside in the yard because if you do get a tiny little drop of diesel on the tarmac it does stain it forever and outside obviously we've got some stones do you know what just while that is warming up it's probably quite irrelevant to most people but a lot of people still do ask rob where'd you get that black lay down mat and if you can see there it's actually one of those protective covers at the boot of an old fiat 500 i kept ages ago and me and Chris use that for everything now. So yeah, it's not nothing in particular and we didn't buy it from anywhere. So I'll let this get hot and we'll drain down the oil. So as you can see guys, I've bought it outside now and um, me and Chris was just having a look there because there was no power steering fluid in it whatsoever and it was nigh and impossible to turn. I had to pull the steering wheel with both hands there but fortunately we filled it up and the power steering instantly started working but I can see underneath that there's a leak coming out of a pipe. So I'm going to continue, change that air filter out, change the um, diesel filter and then I'll jack it back up and move on to that leak because I'd really like to get that sorted because, like I say, it is very, very heavy on the steering, trying to move it without power steering. So let's continue on. I am not actually going to time lapse any more of this bit because it is just changing an air filter and a diesel filter. Um, what I will say about the diesel filter is the new one, I'll just grab it, bear with me. When changing one of these diesel filters, you get a lot of people that they do their own actual servicing on their cars and they put this back on and their, their van or truck or car will never run again. And what it is, is you do need to pre-fill these filters. It does fit on that way. So what we'll do is backfill this with some diesel and screw that back on. There is still gonna be some air in the system, but filling this up with diesel does give it a fighting chance to suck it through very quickly and get it all back to the exactly how it should be so i'm going to move on and get those two bits fitted
Do you reckon it was due an air filter? That is terrible. Do you know the the truck had quite a bad the motor home had quite a bad oil leak that I didn't know about. Let me just place them down and we'll finish off about these first. Look at the difference in that. That is just ridiculous. So the motor home had quite a bad oil leak. I only leak. noticed it when we moved it forward. Well, Chris moved it forward while I was away. And I look down and there's two patches of oil underneath, both quite large that I do need to clean up now. And as soon as I bent down to do an oil change, I see it drip. And you can obviously that shows you something, doesn't it? Guys, look at the oil filter. It's actually got a hole in the end of it somewhere. I think it's only a pinhole. That's possibly it there. But it was actually dripping. I've never seen an oil filter. I mean, to be fair, I've never seen a vehicle this bad ever. The cam belt, the auxiliary belt, air filter, oil filter. The diesel filter actually looks okay. But, I mean, it, it, clearly it's just been hidden well and it hasn't, the weather hasn't got to it because that is unbelievable. I'm so lucky that I didn't drive this because that would have burst and that would have been the end of the engine. So I'm just now about to put that air filter in get that clipped up and then that side of it's done I'm gonna to need to get underneath and find that power steering leak I'm not gonna lie guys I've been under here for over an hour and a half trying to find this leak I've just found it in this little cross pipe here I've managed to undo it from one end but the other end will not come undone so I've literally undone it from this end I'm draining all the fluid out now I'm gonna try and get the spanner Oh, the ring spanner end over this pipe and get it all the way down to the other end but what an absolute nightmare of a job to do really really is difficult eventually guys I did get that pipe off and what I had to do was actually snap it off and then bang a socket over the end of the bolt and unwind it I've just whipped down to the motor factors bought some quarter of pipe and Chris is just flaring the ends for me and we're having to use the original ends that come off the original pipe but that's absolutely fine to use those he's making me up that new pipe we get that fitted get it topped up and that should hopefully fingers crossed solve the problem but i suppose i've probably been on this this little job itself for about two and a half hours now it's been absolute nightmare to do as you can see guys i have just taken it out for a very very brief drive we are back in the yard now and it seems to drive lovely a lot of people were saying about check out uh third gear check out second gear they crunch but the gearbox in it seems to be absolutely bang on i couldn't be happier the brakes are a little bit squealy and they are hanging on a little bit but that's going to be due to it sitting around for so long but i'm quite happy it's all serviced the power steering is really nice and easy now thank you chris for making that pipe and yeah i don't really know what else to say i think we've cracked it on the mechanical side of it the inside of it's as nice as i want to get it what's next it's been a long couple of days guys and a lot of work and that was not expected with that power steering pipe we kind of knew that it was going to have a leak because it had absolutely zero fluid in it and it was so hard to steer but it was so difficult to get to and so hard to actually undo and what i ended up doing in the end chris recommended it he said actually cut the pipe off where it goes into the uh into the bolt and actually bang a socket over it in the end to unwind it and that's what i ended up doing and of course it that then come out very very quickly but you don't want to break stuff you know but sometimes you have to break things out of the way to get to it and end up making a whole new pipe so that's exactly what we done it performed really nice when it drove down the road which is fantastic there was um, a fantastic part of this video which i've actually lost it says memory full so I've deleted some old videos and I didn't realise that I couldn't delete them 
when I was still using them in iMovie. So I actually went to the local parts place and you're going to see that in this video. I am going to go back down there tomorrow and do a little bit to put in here. But I actually went in there and we had a chat and I showed you around the shop and it was about five minutes, six minutes long. So that's a shame really, showing around the motor factors and how much cheaper it is going there. But, you know, not everything goes to plan as we know. But I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed making them, but it really has been tiring since I got home working constantly on that motor home. And I just don't know what's next for it now. So as usual, drop your comments in the comment section and let me know what you think of it. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. I know it's quite a long video and again, you, a lot of you do keep asking for them. So hopefully this uh, meets to the standards. A couple of little updates. I did update on the Cosworth in a previous video saying that I couldn't, we can't start that car till the LSE is finished. We're waiting for the, some panels to come back for that fit them on, drop the other panels off, get them painted, fit them on, and then we'll be making a start on getting that back together as soon as they're done, because we need to get the bit of welding finished. I'm not gonna go into it too much, but we are. We will be back on that soon, and as soon as that's done, we'll be on the Cosworth. I had to mention this because I get a comment on the Cosworth in every single video, because they've missed the update, but there I go. I'm chatting away, and I'll get carried away. Thank you all again for watching. Like, subscribe and share. Follow us on Instagram for the little sneak peeks throughout the day and check out the merchandise. The link is in the description. See you all very soon in the next one.